necessary to defend the life and property of their residents, then I will deploy the United States military and quickly solve the problem for them. So, a lot to unpack there. The president threatening to use unprecedented military force on U.S. soil while offering a preview of it on the streets of Washington. Now, you might wonder why did the police, why were they ordered to move on protesters at that moment? Obviously, the president wanted a photo op, and in a moment, right after he spoke, we learned exactly what that photo op would be. The president wanted peaceful protesters, the kind he said he just supports. He wanted them out of the way for his photo op. It was simultaneously outrageous and dangerous. Now, that's the president starting his very short walk to a nearby church. Uh, with him were uh, Ivanka Trump, who you'll probably see at one moment. She's in high heels clutching a white purse. The defense secretary, Mark, uh, was there. Mark Meadows, the new chief of staff. All of them, in a very kind of scatterbrained way, walking to a nearby church for a photo op. And then I want to show you what actually happened once the president got to the church. Even if it meant tear gassing peaceful protesters, hitting them with flashbangs, pepper spray, and rubber bullets, somebody handed the president that Bible, and then he stood there, and that was it. That was the photo op. The church itself is shut down. We're a great country, that's my thought. That was his photo op. And then, really awkwardly, he asked the attorney general, the defense secretary, really anybody else he could kind of get to come into, Kaylee McEnany was dragged into this, uh, into this photo op, uh, to stand in front of St. John's Episcopal Church, not to pray, not to confess, certainly, we know the president doesn't do that. No, he went to just stand outside, hold up the Bible, and then have photos taken of himself with his cabinet members. It was surreal. A photo op at the church that he rarely attends. His daughter and son-in-law also on hand. Let me just say something about what the president has just shown us. The president of law and order, as he now calls himself, that, which is how he pronounced himself, and then he claimed a power he doesn't really have. He can't send the military into every state. That's, that's not law and order. What the president doesn't seem to know or care is that the vast majority of those protesting, they too are calling for law and order. A black man killed with four officers holding him down, a knee to the neck, for more than eight minutes, nearly three minutes of which he was no longer conscious for. That's not law and order. That's murder. Stopping and frisking a young black man simply because he's a young black man, that's not law and order. The killing of George Floyd, Eric Garner, the torture of Abner Lewima, that's not law and order. The president seems to think that dominating black people, dominating peaceful protesters is law and order. It's not. He calls them thugs? Who is the thug here? Hiding in a bunker, hiding behind a suit? Who is the thug? People have waited for days for this wannabe wartime president to say something. And this is what he says, and that is what he does. I've seen societies fall apart as a reporter. I've seen people dying in the streets while protesting. I've seen countries ripped apart by hate and mis misinformation and lies and political demagogues and racism. We can't let that happen here. Of course, violence is no answer, but people protesting deserve answers, and they haven't gotten them. No matter how many black men have been murdered, lynched, imprisoned, mistreated, redlined, blackballed from jobs, we all know it. People protesting in the streets, they know it, and they're tired of it, and we should be too. There's a curfew in New York tonight at 11 p.m., and we remember another curfew, August 1943. That was the last time there was a curfew like this in the city. You know what that curfew was caused by? 1943, a white police officer shooting a black soldier. The years change, the decades go by, and the sad truth remains. Let's go to C first right now to CNN's Alex Marquardt, who was on the street in the crowd, just as the mayhem broke out in Washington. I shouldn't say mayhem broke out. The peaceful protesters were pushed out, and that's what caused mayhem. Uh, he's with the protesters now and, and the police line. Alex, explain...